All right, the hospitality industry was hit hard during the pandemic. Restaurants sat empty for months, and many are still trying to bounce back from the loss of business. Well, one local restaurant owner started reaching new customers in a different way, and now people are coming from all over the country to get a taste of his food. It's huge, right? Gigantic, in fact. It's the biggest bowl of pho I've ever seen, and you may have seen it too scrolling through your social feeds. Galvia Kitchen in San Mateo posts their mouth-watering dishes and helps you come in and fill your belly at this Vietnamese restaurant. This is where the magic oh, happens. This is oh where my the goodness. magic happens. Wow. The dishes are Instagram famous, and so is this guy, owner Viet Nguyen. <laughs> so, so what I do is I do the called a pho dance. So every time I make a dish, I just do uh, you know after I finish this, I'm so happy. So I just you know I just do I just do that you know the pho dance. <laughs> creator of the Fazilla and master of making every person in his restaurant feel like a friend. People come from all over California, not just the Bay Area. Is it your first time here? Yeah, I drove from Sacramento. Oh, really? Wow. How did you uh, know that, uh, about uh, the house? Father's life huh? on Facebook. On Facebook? <laughs> Some people even come from across the other side of the country. So wait, you guys came all the way from... Really? Yeah, yeah. Did. How did you find out about the restaurant? Mm -hmm. Social media. Social media became a lifeline for Viet during the pandemic, a way to keep his restaurant afloat. I cannot afford to to uh, advertise in different ways. So I just do social media. So all I did, everything that you see, it just in my iPhone. Viet came to the United States when he was just a teen. Yeah, I left Vietnam uh, and, uh, when I was ten. I stayed in a refugee camp for three years, and then we came here. Wow. Did you come with your whole family? Uh, yeah, the whole family. Eventually working as an investment banker before yeah, pivoting okay. to restaurant tier. Uh, so this is uh, the main dining area. He now owns four restaurants. The newest one just opened up in San Francisco in early December. So this is a lobster. Okay. And then this is a rib. And then we have filet mignon. And then brisket. Why do you think people love your pho so much? Or just your food in general? I figured out if uh, we make things that we like to eat, people, all the people will like it. That's very simple. How did you learn how to make those particular dishes? Did you just watch other people cooking them? I have them, a lot or? of secrets, but there's no secret at all. <laughs> <laughs> so basically what you do is, so my family, I have my sister, my other half that does pretty much all the hard part. That's You're the one. You're the secret behind all the success. <laughs> and this family-friendly vibe so, shows okay, in the staff. So that my cousin. This is um, this is my number one chef right here. So he's actually my sister boyfriend. The people, and of course in Viet, his motto: "Come hungry," and he is not kidding. Oh, oh my God! <laughs> so that's why I brought a friend. Viet is definitely serving up a feast to feed on in person. To give it that just extra bump and yeah, flavor. Yeah, a little fatty, you know. So. And for your eyes on your social feed. All right, well, for your eyes here as well. Join me now in studio as owner and chef Viet. Thank you for being here. Oh, no, thank you for having me. Good uh, morning. Good morning. So you are going to cook us up some pho. This is not exactly the fazilla we had, we've seen there, but what kind of pho is this this morning? So this why what I call is the wok pho. It's uh, literally just a stir-fry uh, beef pho that uh, I get inspired by, uh, by northern style pho in Hanoi, and that's not really well known outside of Vietnam. So a lot of people don't know about it, but pho, there's so many different ways to make pho and eat pho, and there's no, so this is one of the things that um, is, is do not get enough credit, but one of my favorite bowl of pho um, uh, ever, so. Well, uh, everything we saw at your restaurant was absolutely delicious. And, <laughs> Thank you. You know, it's so impressive how you use social media to just kind of captivate everyone and get their attention, and it really made a big difference for your business. You know, restaurant business is extremely hard, so you got to try to do anything you can to get your business to survive, and uh, one way to do it is social media. It doesn't cost you a penny. I mean, it costs you a little bit, but... And, you, and then you'll be able to talk directly to the customer versus using someone else. Um, um, like paying an advertiser. Uh, yeah, or and then that's term. costly. There's just no way you can survive Ooh, with look that. look at that. And this is the filet mignon. I can smell the garlic. It. I wish people could smell this at home. It smells <laughs> delightful and delicious. Yeah, this is filet mignon. I stir fry with garlic, ginger, and onion, and a stir fry hat way. 
And I think what was great too is when we walked through your restaurant and we were learning about the food, everywhere we went, someone was talking about finding you on social media and coming to your restaurant. And it felt like a very family atmosphere. You know, we just, it's a, it's a family business and um, we try to keep it as a family business. We just literally cook what we like to cook. We just set up the business the way we like and, um, and, and the rest just work it out by itself. So, um, and uh, we just have a lot of repeat customers, uh, a lot of new customers. It's been working out since uh, I started doing social media. Uh, so we have just about a minute left. Tell us about your new location. You have one in San Mateo, but you just opened up a restaurant in San Francisco that's getting a lot of buzz. Um, yeah, it's, it took me about three years to build. Apparently, wow. it's not easy to uh, build a restaurant from in San Francisco, so, um, it took me about three years, just a lot of money. Uh, yeah, this okay. is uh, Ooh, this Everyone's got to come a, check this out. A, a I know, yolk. I know. Okay, so egg yolk, okay. and then what you, else you, we you, Okay, so. <laughs> so what are you going to do in that pot? So what we do here, we're going to pull. This is the broth. This the is broth, the okay? It's called a mat 24 hours for a broth. Mm. Okay. Mm. Just we literally cook for 24 hours. Oh, wow. Is that how the egg is going to cook, or it's just the yeah. yolk in there? So the egg, you know, so there's a a uh, typical bowl of fowl, and when I make a bowl of fowl, I try to add a little bit extra, That's extra, nice. because you, you I am extra, extra. extra. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, egg yolk, because uh, people in Vietnam, they eat fowl with uh, the egg yolk, so. And all the toppings, so you're adding? Yeah, onion, just a lot. So northern style fowl, you do a lot of onion, but okay. no vegetable. All right. And in southern fowl, you should do a lot of vegetable, but less onion. Well, Via, so, thank you for coming thank in. You this so is much. amazing. <laughs> Galvia Kitchen, check them out. Obviously, you can find them on the gram. You can also find them, uh, we'll have them on kpix.com, so you can check it out there, too. Thank you so much. We're thank diving you. In. Oh, by the way, I got to say hi to my son, Charlie, Theodore, and my wife, Monica, and my sister. My secret is uh, my sister, Lynn. Seth Lynn. Oh, thank you so you're much. Sweetest. Okay, we'll be right <laughs> back. Thanks for sharing.